when we first left Korea, I believe that there was another me that still was living and growing up in South Korea. That was a way of coping with homesickness. And I still think about her and I still converse with her in my poetry. My name is Don Mi Che and I am a poet and translator. I really didn't think about Korean and the U.S. history are intertwined until I began translating. I eventually realized how my own life was deeply shaped and impacted by the U.S. imperial wars in Asia. I started to think that translation was a political act. Even though I am writing about historical events that took place in South Korea, I am actually also trying to understand my life in relation to what took place. I like the fact that I have pushed myself to push the boundaries of poetry by incorporating images and photographs and drawings, prose, interviews, that I don't stay static but I'm always challenging myself to push the way I write and challenge the notion of what poetry is or what poetry looks like or what poetry can be. In Hartley War, I was focusing on what is known as the Forgotten War in the US. I wanted to find out what kind of language the military used during the Korean War. I was doing a wordplay, an interlingual wordplay with the word gook. And this gook is a racial slur. It was first used in the Philippines during the Spanish-American War, and then later in the Korean War, in the Vietnam War. So I was really interested in how this word migrated from war to war to war. And gook, in Korean, it sounds like nation, gook. And it also uh, sounds the same as soup. In Korean, mi gook means America. So I wrote ni equals sign gook, ni gook. I was thinking that this kind of interlingual punning is a form of subversion. These are what I think of as conjoined words, politically and linguistically. In DMC Colony, I wanted to explore the history of the division of Korea. That this division is not just a national division, but it was an ideological division which perpetuated uh, violence and dehumanization of one another, which led to some of the war crimes and genocide and massacres that took place before the war, during the war, and after the war. On February 23rd, 2018, the day of my poetry reading with Daniel Bozutsky at the Pulitzer Arts Foundation, I walked across Forest Park in St. Louis, Missouri. I was heading toward the St. Louis Art Museum. I heard a kind of muted, distant calling, a polyphony of cries. Because I had never heard the flock calls of snow geese before, I was baffled by the flood of sound, seemingly from nowhere and everywhere. Instinctively, I turned my head from side to side, then up. My head tilted back, triggered vertigo, a common symptom of Meniere's disease. My ears flapped about dizzily like a sparrow and followed the migrating snow geese above. The geese promptly instructed me, a chorus, return, 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 return. Return, 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 return. Then they flew even higher out of my ear's reach. The snow geese must have felt sorry for the homesick sparrow from a faraway place, for they dropped me a little line from the sky. See you at DMZ. Alone again, I could only chirp to myself. Translator for hire. Hire. Hire me.